hey guys, in last week's video I talked to you about how your body reacts to stress. Today we're going to go through some of the symptoms you might be experiencing so that you can try and identify if how you're feeling at the moment, if the things that things going on in your body at the moment are all due to stress. You may have some of these symptoms, you may have a lot of these symptoms, and some of them may be due to stress, and some of them you might think are due to something else. Hopefully we can start identifying symptoms that are due to stress, and then once we know that you are feeling stressed, we can go through lots of strategies to deal with it. Some of you may be sitting there thinking, well, I'm sitting exams, of course I'm feeling stressed. What a silly, silly thing to be talking about at the moment. Of course I know I'm stressed. But maybe some of the things you might not have thought of due to stress are. Maybe, and this is really, really important, you can recognise some of these symptoms in your friends or in your siblings or maybe even in other people at home and then you know how to better help them. One of the big things that happens to you when you're feeling stress is that you find it difficult to relax, difficult to stop, difficult to stop thinking or overthinking what is currently going on at the moment so whether it's busy watching netflix or whether you're trying to get to sleep or whether you're out with your friends if all you can think about is your exams all you can think about is your current situation and you can't think about anything else then this is a really really big sign that you are stressed difficulty focusing is another one which i know doesn't seem very fair because you can't relax and you can't focus but sometimes it feels like you have so many things to do all at once that you can't actually just focus on doing one thing and instead of just sitting down instead of revising instead of just studying you are constantly thinking about all of the other things that you have to do. Constantly feeling really, really anxious. That heavy feeling that weighs down on you, that something really, really bad is about to happen, or will happen in the future, or will happen if you do that. That constant feeling of anxiety can again make it really, really hard for you to relax and make it really, really hard for you to focus. Now these things all play into each other. They all feed off each other. If it's really, really hard for you to relax, then you're going to feel more anxious. If every time you try and focus, it feeds back into your anxiety, and then not being able to focus will link to your anxiety about not getting any work done. It is a vicious, vicious cycle. It is likely that you are feeling overwhelmed, that you have so much stuff to do that you really, really don't know where to start. There are lots of strategies I'm going to talk to you about in later videos where we can deal with this feeling but this feeling of sitting at your desk with all of your books around you and just going ah, I don't know what to do I don't know where to start I don't know how to study or how to revise all of this is due to the stress and the pressure of your upcoming exams you may find that you've developed a little bit of a temper or that you've become really really moody all of a sudden and that when your friends say something that is a little bit annoying and you'd normally just laugh it off or ignore it you might snap at them or when your little brother or sister are constantly asking you questions or when people at home are constantly saying do this do this your temper might come out in ways that you don't really want it to that are very very unusual for me for you you might find yourself have a little bit of a personality change into a, a moody grumpy person that snaps at people all the time this is not hopefully a long-term personality change and then when the stressful situation when the exams are finished you should be back to the lovely person that you are you might be struggling with a lack of motivation the fact that you've got so much to do and you don't know where to start actually prevents you from starting it or doing anything at all the pile of books on your desk will stay there unread the notes will stay unmade this lack of motivation is all about the stress you're feeling at the moment. Some of these stress feelings may have developed into depression, that heavy, oppressive feeling that just sits in you and you don't necessarily know the way out of it. I'm gonna be talking to you in later videos on how to properly identify this and then the various different things you can do about it. You might have stopped looking after yourself as you normally would. Now this is gonna vary for different people but maybe you used to put a lot of it in your hair and your makeup and now you just 
can't be bothered. You don't see the point in doing it anymore. Maybe you just do lots of exercise and go out running or play lots of sports and at the moment you just don't have the motivation and you can't be bothered to do it. This is all because of the situation we're in at the moment. This is all due to stress. But looking after yourself, self-care, exercise is a really, really important thing you need to do to help yourself at the moment. You may have developed really, really low self-esteem. Now this is the sort of thing that can happen gradually, can sneak up on you so you don't necessarily notice that it's happening. Or you might have just woken up one day and felt like you're worthless, that you're not worth anything. Now this is completely untrue. You are an important, valuable, amazing person. And it is really, really important for you to recognise that these feelings of worthlessness, that your low self-esteem is all linked to the hormonal changes going on in your body, which all is caused by the stress of the upcoming exams. You may think that, why would anyone be friends with you, so you stop trying in your relationships. You may think, what's the point of me getting out of bed? You may think, what is the point of me even attempting to do any revision? What is the point of me even attempting to do my hair, my makeup, my nails, any sports? All of these things are your body's response to your situation. You may have developed some rather poor eating habits. Now, this can swing lots and lots of different ways. You might have stopped eating, you might have started eating way too much, or you might have just started eating absolutely rubbish as opposed to a proper balanced diet. Now, you can't control what is happening to you at the moment. You can't control the fact that you've got exams. You can't control too much your body's response to it, but you can control what you eat. And sometimes this can be a really, really self-destructive behaviour because not eating properly is going to make you feel worse, which is going to impact how well you can do in your studies, which is all then going to feed back into your stress response and thus leading back to eating. So it's really, really important that we follow a sensible eating pattern. There are lots and lots of different physical ways that you wouldn't think stress can show itself, but it actually does. Random aches, pains, dizziness, pounding heart, constipation, diarrhea, headaches, all due to your body's response to stress. Now I know some of you will have had these symptoms, I know some of you will have googled these symptoms and come up with the complete wrong thing for why you're having these symptoms. And all of this is just going to make you feel more stressed, make you feel more worried, make you feel more anxious at the time when you really should be focusing on your exams. Some of you might have started using unhealthy mechanisms to try and help you relax. These are not good ways to relax. You might have started using alcohol, you might have started using illegal drugs, you might have started using technically legal drugs, but all of these are really, really bad way to relax. They are just going to make the situation worse. So please don't do any of these. These are just self-destructive behaviours. You might have lost interest in sex. Now whether you were having sex or whether you weren't having sex, at some point you probably thought about sex. Maybe you thought about it a lot all the time. And if you suddenly realise that you've stopped thinking about sex, that you're not interested in sex anymore, you, it's important to realise that this is a normal response to stress. You are not broken, it will come back eventually. Also, if you are in a relationship with somebody and they seem to have lost interest in you, it is not because they hate you, it is not because you're a bad person, it is not because you're ugly or you smell. They simply could just be really, really stressed and need your support at this time. If you recognise any of these symptoms in yourself or if you recognise any of these in your friend or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your siblings or your cousin or even the adults at home, then it is really, really important you Think about your situation and try and work out whether these symptoms are due to stress. If they are due to stress, then I am going to go through lots and lots of different ways so we can reduce your stress level and get you back on track. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too quick. 